Which of the following are continuous variables and which are discrete? A variable that can be measured only with whole numbers is considered discrete. A variable that can be measured with whole numbers and values in between are considered continuous. So let's look at our first scenario, a number of traffic fatalities per year in the state of Florida. A traffic fatality can only be measured in whole numbers, so we're going to put discrete for that situation. B, distance of golf ball travels after being hit with a driver. That can go so many feet or yards, but it can also go halfway, like 230 and a half feet. So that can be measured as a continuous variable. Time required to drive from home to college on any given day. Since that can be hours, minutes, seconds, and in between, that's also continuous. D, number of ships in Pearl Harbor on any given day. Assuming the ones that are still good boats, ships, that's going to be discrete. Your weight before breakfast each morning. And since you can weigh like 180 and a half pounds, you're not limited to whole numbers. Determine if a, this, let's see, um, sorry, go. Consider each distribution. Determine if it's a valid probability distribution or not. Explain your answer. Probabilities are discrete. So the top rows on each chart are integers. That's good. The sum, if you cover all possibilities, should equal to 1. 0.21 plus 0.62, that's 0.83 plus 0.17, that does have a sum of 1, so this one's yes. The bottom example, 0.21 plus 0.62, that's 0.83, plus 0.22 does not equal 1. In fact, it goes over, so this one's no. Consider the probability distribution shown below. Compute the expected value of the distribution. Our top row, we have discrete values, 0, 1, and 2. Our probabilities, 0 0.25, 0 0.60, 0 0.15. That adds up to 1, so we have a legitimate probability distribution. Expected value is called the mean, and we're going to use the Greek letter mu to represent that. Now, this one I made sure the table was small. I'm going to calculate this one by hand. It's the sum of the x values times each one of them's probability. So the way you would set this up, sigma means to add. So we're going to take each column and multiply the values. The probability of an event occurring no times, 0, has a probability of 0.25. When the variable changes to 1, its probability is 0.60. And then finally, for 2, it's 0.15. Okay, let's get the sum. We're going to have 0, 0 0.60, 0 0.30. So that gives us an expected value or average of 0.90. Computing the standard deviation, now that's a little bit more complicated. The Greek letter sigma is used. The formula is square root. We're going to sum 
each x value minus the mean that we just found, 0.90, squared times the probability listed underneath. So that's the formula. Okay, so we're going to have a really long radical. Okay, so in our table, we have the first x value is 0 minus mu. Minus mu quantity squared. The probability from the first uh, column is 0 0.25. Plus, then we move over to the next x value of 1. 1 minus the mean we found in part A. Quantity squared times the probability in column 2, which was 0 0.60. Plus, the next x value is 2 minus the mean from part A times its probability, 0 0.15. And again, all this is under a radical square root. It, <coughs> excuse me. It is up to you if you do the square root initially or if you wait and get your total underneath. I'm going to do the total underneath. Be careful typing this in. Parentheses 0 minus 0 0.90 close parentheses squared times 0.25 plus parentheses 1 minus 0.90 closed squared times 0.60 plus parentheses 2 minus 0.90, close parentheses squared. You type it in just as it's written, times 0.15. All right, so I get 0.39 under the radical. Now, that's without the square root. And then if I square root that answer, I get 0.62. 6245, that's rounded to four decimal places.